Jeffrey Butoto is an entrepreneur, a businessman, a father of two, and I think you can all agree with me, he has almost one of the greatest smiles in the world. <laughs> he owns a small agro-inputs business in Aganga, Uganda, called Sukura Agro Supplies. Over the 10 years, Godfrey has been in business selling seed, pesticide, and fertilizer, he has seen many non-governmental organizations come and go. Each had a slightly different approach to achieving change and reshaping the seed industry in Uganda and offer better access to inputs of inputs to smallholder farmers, but they weren't really getting there. So why? In many cases, these projects we're taking direct delivery approaches. This means providing inputs such as seed, pesticide, and fertilizer at reduced prices or at no cost at all to farmers. Direct delivery models were creating market distortion for Godfrey's business. They were leaving himself and many farmers dependent on the presence of donors and NGOs. These products come in with good intentions to create change and benefit smallholder farmers and the broader agricultural system. But instead, they were leaving a market heavily reliant on their presence. As a result, when a project left, so did the change they were trying to create. During the last several decades in Africa, the development se sector has expanded dramatically. Non-governmental organizations, volunteer groups, multilateral and bilateral organizations have recorded numerous targets, strategies, outcomes, and objectives. In many cases, the contributions and monetary injections have unfortunately not resulted in lasting change or economic growth. Instead, the development sector has become embedded and deeply rooted in the economies and cultures of many countries. A shift in approach is needed in order to yield lasting results. I believe that sustainable change must be systemic. If change is not systemic, it is not change at all. Today, I will share my insights on what systemic change is, what it looks like in practice, and how it differs from traditional direct delivery approaches to poverty reduction. These insights are going to draw largely off of my experience working with Engineers Without Borders Canada on the agriculture value chains venture in Uganda. I recognize that the development sector spans much further than Iganga, Uganda, East Africa, and Africa itself. However, working closely with Godfrey Butoto at his small agro inputs business, I was able to gain an in-depth understanding of the complexities of creating lasting change at a field level. The concept of systemic change is linked to how one defines change and the type of change one is trying to create. A system involves interconnected parts, pieces, and persons that influence each other both directly and indirectly. The word system can describe anything from a computer to a university to a seed distribution network in Uganda. Systemic change challenges how we think about creating change. This model involves an in-depth understanding of a system's components and how these components interconnect and influence one another. Systemic change does not focus on one individual or one component, but it more broadly seeks to understand how the interconnections between stakeholders can be leveraged to create positive change. Now, systemic change approaches involve working with a variety of stakeholders. These stakeholders are interconnected, benefiting and constraining one another. 
In the maize system, for example, stakeholders could include seed and pesticide companies, agro-input dealers, farmers, traders, and exporters. If a project was focused on improving the livelihoods of smallholder farmers through increased access to inputs, they would first need to understand the relationship between input dealers and farmers. Further, input dealers like Godfrey would also need to have access to seed and pesticide companies, so this relationship and understanding this relationship is crucial. And then there's this other complexity of farmers' participation in the system. Farmers are limited to their participation in this system if there is not someone who is willing to buy his or her crop. Now, each of these relationships is defined by power dynamics and levels of influence. Any project that is actually trying to create sustainable change must reflect a high-level understanding of the system in their project design and approach. Now, stimulating these types of changes involves creating appropriate incentives for all stakeholders. Systemic change considers not only individuals, but the dynamic relationships each stakeholder has, emphasizing the idea of win-win ideas. Now, in the case of the relationship between Godfrey's business and smallholder farmers like Medina, I explored the potential of a business model to not only expand Godfrey's business, but at the same time increase consistent access of inputs to farmers like Medina. Now, by focusing on system-driven change rather than outside-driven change, one can ensure that systems will uphold the change and be able to adapt it in the future. This intervention concept is referred to as light touch. Now, the touch of outside actors is used to stimulate change rather than sustain it. System-driven change through a light touch approach ensures that systemic changes are not only sustainable, but resilient. This summer, I worked in partnership with Godfrey to innovate and adapt a business model that reflected his vision and motivation for becoming an inputs dealer in an increasingly competitive industry. Now, in the coming years, if Godfrey's business expands, he will become recognized in eastern Uganda for his shift in business strategy. His success will drive change in how input dealers and farmers are interacting. Godfrey, not me, will lead the change, modifying it as the sector evolves. By ensuring that projects focus not only on sustainability, but resiliency through a light touch approach to these win-win ideas, true lasting change can be created in dynamic environments. Direct delivery approaches tend to create supply without demand, by supplying services and goods based on perceived needs. Systemic change is driven by demand, not supply. Stakeholders need to have ownership over the desired change. The focus is on system-driven designs and ideas recognizing the necessity of stakeholder participation at all levels. In past years, Godfrey has largely been selling seed to NGOs in what can be described as a broken system. He estimates that up until recently, almost 75% of his earnings could be attributed to sales to NGOs or government agriculture programs. 
The perception was that farmers couldn't afford the improved high quality seed. And so it was distributed at no cost to farmers. This direct delivery approach of supplying seed has led to market distortion and dependency of farmers on free handouts. Today, as NGO activity decreases, Godfrey is changing his business model. He's establishing new linkages and supporting direct interactions between his business and farmers. This will allow him to establish a more predictable and sustainable business model, which allows for increased customer base and business expansion. This win-win shift not only means Godfrey will see success moving forward, but the smallholder farmers like Medina will be able to access consistent access to inputs while holding input dealers more accountable to their product. Development sector models need to change. They need to allow people like Godfrey to plan for sustainability, adaptability, and achieving dreams rather than short-term results. In order to be sustainable, change must be systemic. Thank you. <laughs>